Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Justin. Today I'm going to show you my Compound Planetary Gearbox. As well, we're going to do a couple of tests. I'm going to do a torque test and a couple of stress tests. And then I want to talk about the theory and the workings of this gearbox. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the explanation of this gearbox and how it works is kind of boring. So later on in the video, after I'm done all my tests, I will explain the math and the theory behind the gearbox. But right now, I'm just going to do a really quick overview. So this gearbox is made by two stages of planetary gears. So I'm just going to disassemble this real quick. So you got stage one um, with one of these gears. And mounted to one of the planets, you got a stage two planet. Now how this works is that when the planets rotate around the circumference, um, they have a slightly different diameter um, of a uh, pitch diameter. So all this means is that when this rotates, it pushes this gear a lot slower relative to the sun gear. In this uh, configuration, we're, go uh, we're going to get we're going to get about two hundred and sixty eight point eight turns of the sun gear to equal one turn of the output. Now, if you want to print off the model, there's a link down below in the description as well as an assembly video. Okay, let's get down to testing. Okay, so here we just have the motor turning. Um, for one full rotation, it takes about 82 seconds, so a minute and 22 seconds, um, which makes a lot of sense since um, the hobby motor runs 200 RPM. Now, the next test I did was a torque test, um, which I just had a, a lever hooked up to the output of the arm and just figured out what the stalling torque was. So unfortunately, I filmed it, but I don't know what happened to the clip. It doesn't exist anymore. I tried to look for it. So I can't show you that, but I do have the data. So the motor outputs 0 0.007 kilograms per meter. That's just the motor with the yellow gearbox. And when I tested, the stall torque was 0 0.1518 kilograms per meter. Now that seems good, except when you consider the gearbox is there, which it should be 1.88 kilograms per meter and we're measuring 0 0.1518 which which is pretty bad actually um which i can't say it's unexpected because this is just three printed parts um you have some more accuracy more friction than you would have with other types of manufacturing so i would have done the test again on camera but as you see my next test i just did a stress test i put it on the motor i ran it and then i held and pushed down on the lever and it just broke off the gear. Okay, so let's just quickly look at some of the damage that happened to the print. Um, everything was actually quite expected. Um, what happened was, uh, looking, okay, so like, the pin just sheared off because of the way it gets printed. So three of the gears broke. One of them still intact, so that's good, I guess. But yeah, just the weakest part of the print and it just snapped right off. Um, so in version two, I already would design this, but in version two, um, the two gears look like this, and instead of a pin, you got this piece, and this piece is pinned like this, so the layer lines are perpendicular to the shear force. So, yeah, like that. I'll make a video on my version two later on, but let's go on to some of the math. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain the theory and math behind the gearbox. First thing I want to do is think about a vacuum pinion gear set. So let's say this, um, this pinion gear has a circumference of one unit, right? So what does that mean? That means for every one rotation, this... Um, for every one rotation, this rack will move down one unit, uh, move down or move up one unit. And let's say this pinion has a 0 0.75 unit. So what does that mean? That means for every one rotation of this gear, this rack moves up and down 0.75 units. So this represents, so, the, so these pinions represent our planetary gears in our gear set. So, now what happens if we mount the second set on top of the first set? So, essentially, mounting the two pinion gears together like this. 
they can't rotate independently, so they rotate together. So if we stack them on top of each other, something like this, and we turn this one full rotation, well, what will happen is this bottom set will move down one unit, and this top set will move down uh, 0.75 units, essentially making a difference of 0.25 units. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that rack two is going slower than rack one. Now, what if the first rack doesn't move? So what happens is that if these are both lined up, if this moves, this rotates one time, it moves up one unit, this will also move up, but instead of moving up one unit, it also gets pushed down by the rotation of this uh, pinion two. So it only moves up 0.5 units, right? So instead of a vacuum uh, pinion gear, we can think of this as, let me just disassemble this. We can rotate our rack into a circle and do the same type of theory. So what happens is the ring gear or rack one gets mounted stationary, the sun gear rotates. So since the sun gear rotates, our planetary gear rotates. Now, since our second planetary gear is also mounted to the first planetary gear, they bo both rotate together, essentially moving this a lot slower than the first one. And this, uh, and this finger represents the second rack, making a very high reduction. So let's look at some of the math now. Okay, so here is the equation I derived and figured out. Um, there's only four variables in this equation. There's S1 is the sun of the driven gear. R1 is the ring of stage one. P1, which is the planetary, uh, the planets of stage one. We got P2, which is the planets of the second stage. And we got ring two, which is just the output ring. So if we just look at our scenario for this particular gearbox, we have 10 teeth on the sun. Uh, ring one has 38 teeth and P1 has 14 teeth. For P2, we have 12 teeth, and ring 2, we have 32 teeth. So if we just do the math, we get 5 over 24 times negative 1 over 56. The negative 1 just means that the output is rotating in the opposite direction of the input. So that just gives us negative 0 0.00372, which means we have, for every one rotation on the input sun, we get 0 0.00372 output. Um, so but that doesn't really help us a lot since it's such a small number. This also means that for every 268.6 turns on the input, we get one rotation on the output. Now, um, this isn't an equation you need to know for designing a planetary gearbox. There's a bunch of other equations you do also need to know with this equation when designing a compound planetary gearbox. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, guys. If you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Bye. Yep. Something broke.